Hello, it's uh, Bruce here again. Um, today I'm going to talk a bit about using street uh, sheet styrene metal siding uh, to represent corrugated metal roofing or corrugated metal uh, siding on a structure. Uh, I'm using evergreen um, sheet styrene and it's number 4526. Uh, they're metal siding and they have a variety of the metal sidings uh, both in terms of thickness of the sheet and this is a 0 0.040 thick and in the spacing of the corrugations and this is 0 0.040 spacing as well. So it's to again uh, simulate uh, corrugated metal roofing or on a on a building and siding, you could use it also. When, when you buy these sheets, <clears throat> and you may or may not be able to uh, uh, see the corrugations in this sheet, uh, but it's the entire sheet is uh, uninterrupted, uh, and if you just put that down as the roof on your structure, it's not going to look right because when uh, building, if you apply uh, metal roofing. They come in lengths of uh, six or eight feet long and uh, you know three or four feet wide and uh, one of the things you want to do is to make it look like there are uh, various rows like here's a row of, of metal siding and here's a row etc. So the question is how do we make these rows? Um, this is actually the roof that I'm working on right now already spray painted gray so that's what we're going to talk about. So let's look at some of the tools um, that we're going to be talking about in the video. One is this uh, very useful dental pick. Now, you know, you can find these online certainly, but I know my local hardware stores near the checkout counter have, you know, a tray with all these assorted dental picks in it that uh, you can pick through and, and uh, pick up what you want. So you want, this is very sharp point, and curved, and that's what we're going to use to uh, make those horizontal lines uh, in our in our siding. Uh, we need a uh, our usual um, modeler's uh, rule. Metal is, to, is your best choice um, for this project. That's all I need. But for some of the other things we're going to talk about in making uh, roofs or sides out of this stuff, is we need to be able to cut the styrene off of the sheet and again we're going to uh, need a uh, hobby knife. Now this is one that happens to have a scalpel blade in it and uh, when you cut styrene what you, I always do is just use the the back actually, the back of the point on this to uh, snap and break my uh, styrene. Um, I think, you know, the, of the major tools, uh, t uh, tidying up the cuts and so forth, uh, a couple of decent files. I am uh, very uh, particular that I, I like a decent one because uh, they're easier to maintain over the long haul. These are Nicholson files. Uh, just as an aside, my paternal grandfather, uh, John August de Young, worked for Nicholson file as a file maker. Oh, back in the 19-teens and 20s in the Patterson, New Jersey area. Um, this one, this one with the wooden handle, actually still says Made in the USA on it. Uh, and this one here says it's Made in Mexico. Both are bastard files, mill bastards, and are, are very good for tidying up uh, styrene. And uh, that's what we're going to use. Um, I, we're going to have some supplies later when we try to paint these things, but let's let's start with uh, applying the separation line. This is going to be again a smart a piece of uh, roofing, and uh, it's about 12 feet long, uh, wide here. And I want to, at the six foot line, put uh, a dividing row, uh, signifying that there's two different rows of of siding. So I've marked it off at the six foot line. I want this to be more vertical when I do my scribing. Get it lined up. 
hold it fore and aft, press down and start to just pull the dental pick across the corrugations. I'm going to do this probably seven or eight times and back on this one I'm going to back off of it too so I'm sure I'm getting right to the edge. About seven or eight times to get a decent uh, line that will show up if, when you uh, paint it and so forth. And I can feel a raised area there and I'll just going with the corrugations and my sanding stick just clean it up just a little bit get the burr off of it. And uh, you erase those lines there initially that I had drawn on there for guidelines. I don't show up through the paint. And using a toothbrush, get the debris off of these. And this one will be ready now to spray paint my gray. I'm going to wait until I get all the remaining roof parts done before I spray them, but this is what I'm using. It's just a rattle can uh, of light gray primer. You can tell from the uh, lid usually the color of uh, the primer, and this is a lighter gray. I have a darker gray, but I like the light gray for uh, simulate metal. So that's all there is to uh, creating those lines. and. Uh, you know, if you buy a model like uh, Walther's Glacier Gravel, they have molded in these division lines. But if you're starting with a plain evergreen styrene, you have to, to add them yourself or, or they're just not going to be there. Okay, so that's uh, the first tip. Get yourself one of these uh, curved, sharp-pointed dental picks for that particular task. Now the other issue that I come in uh, to here when you're trying to make a roof is that the uh, siding is this wide and the roof is this wide so you're going to have to piece a couple pieces of this uh, siding together, edge gluing them. Now uh, you know some things are edge glue better than others. It's never an ideal thing to do but we, we don't really have a, a choice here. But styrene edge glues together pretty good if you uh, have a very straight, uh, two very straight lines to uh, put together. So I'm going to start, I have to cut this in half because I'm going to then glue each half together into a longer piece. And if you haven't worked with styrene, you know, it's, it's a lot quicker in many ways than working with wood, which I tend to do most of the time. But um, and you know what, I can, it's small enough that I can use my square on this. Um, line up those lines. And I'm going to use the back again of this uh, scalpel. And I'm going to start running it across the entire piece. Again, seven, eight, nine times. I'm not trying to get all the way through. Just trying to get... Oh, usually I try to get more than halfway through. So that should do fine. And now it's just a matter of bending. Bend it the other way and you have two pieces. This is not going to be the gluing edge anyway, but I just want to get some of that debris off of there. Now what I had done before I started playing with this was I had looked at that piece I had in my hand and determined which edge was the original edge that had never been cut. It was from the factory. And I put this pencil mark showing which edge it is. And on the back of this other one you see it. So those are the two that I am going to glue together. And uh, I'll get one side lined up very good, the other side will not be, but it doesn't matter. The glue of choice on this is uh, one of the plastic uh, styrene uh, liquid glues like testers uh, is a good example that's made primarily out of uh, MEK, methyl ethyl ketone. And uh, very odiferous, you should use this uh, 
in a large area and well ventilated area. And the key here is to wet both sides and just let it go for about uh, 20 seconds or so. Kind of softens the, uh, the plastic up. You notice I have a, a little holder here that I've drilled a hole in with a flat blade uh, drill bit because every one of us who's ever just opened up a, can, a bottle of paint or a bottle of this stuff has knocked it over at one point in time. Alrighty, so that's enough time. Now I'm going to put them together. Just rub up and down a little bit. I'll take my right angle board just to use as a backstop here to get these pieces together good. And you don't have to hold them too long. I'm putting pressure in. I'm making sure that they're uh, nice and smoothly together. And uh, probably in less than a minute, you have a decent bond. And once you have that, then the uh, best thing to do is to uh, swipe again right over that joint from the back side, not the front side, or you're going to be melting and making a mess out of your corrugations. But uh, rub another uh, brush full on the back side, and that'll seep into that crack, and it will give you a uh, strong enough bond to work with, which is uh, all you need now. When I actually assemble the roofs, I tend to glue a little brace back there, another piece of styrene over that, but uh, that's good. All right, I'm going to push that up to the top here. Put a little weight on each side, kind of holding them together. And uh, leave that be for now. Later I'll cut it down, it'll, it'll be exactly the same size as this. By the way, one of the things you can do when using, this is going to be part of a roof up on the clear story. Uh, so it doesn't look so thick is to lay it face down and take one of your files and start uh, filing at about a 45 degree angle. Make sure you can see this, yes you can. Just go back and forth until you um, start coming down to a, a thinner visible edge. And uh, then to the viewer, even though the entire sheet is 0 0.040, this edge now you can get down to uh, you know, 0.010 or so. So I've done that on the visible sides. And on the top where it's going to butt at an angle against another piece of styrene for the back of the roof, I've uh, been more careful in uh, using the files and getting that whole edge down to a 45 degree angle. So when the two of them come together, even if it's not exactly 90, they're going to make a nice uh, sharp edge together. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, coloring and weathering these things. Uh, just by spraying it with the light gray paint, very light coat, uh, you pretty much get the color of uh, you know aged corrugated metal on a roof, and uh, call it good. You know, give it a, a light coat front and back. <clears throat> I've done all my trim work and everything ahead of time, my filing. Um, and that, oh, by the way, this is, this is also joined. You just can't even hardly tell where the joint is. Um, I have to get the light just right. It's the last inch or so here. So there's a joint going right up here. I don't know if I can get it at the right angle for you to see it, but that's very secure right now. So this is representing three rows of, of corrugated metal. Um, and I know that normally the, the individual sheets also are divided this way into three foot wide, but you don't really notice it if you, on, a, on a roof if you have uh, this line going on there. So I, I sprayed this two days ago and I let it really cure good because my next step is to uh, do washes of uh, artist oils with um, uh, drawing it down and thinning it out with uh, low odor mineral spirits. 
Uh, luckily now on the market there's a number of them that either say no odor, odorless, or low odor. Um, don't believe them if they say odorless. There's always a little odor, but it's nowhere as near as obnoxious as it uh, used to be. And uh, for the oils, and for rust, I guess two tubes here of artist oil that I've had for decades, and you can hardly even tell I've taken anything out of it yet. Uh, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Uh, these happen to be made by Winton. Um, at the time, I think I got them in an AC Moore store with my 40% off coupon. Um, and uh, they're two good rust colors, a lighter and a darker rust. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is uh, put a dab of those oils at the top of a row. Let me just, for this purpose, go in a little bit closer. And uh, you know, I did this a little bit before the, uh, the video just to give you an idea of where we're going. The nice thing about this approach is if you don't like it, and I don't like this middle row at all, in the next day or two, I can just come back with a brush full of the uh, mineral spirits, put it over that, and wipe it off with a cloth and start all over again. So it's uh, able to be removed. I've never tried removing it after two or three weeks, so I don't know how dry it gets at that point, but certainly for a day or two, you can live with it and then decide uh, whether you like it or not. And again, I said I don't particularly like the job I did on that road. A little bit too heavy. Um, so I start with the, the lighter color, which is the raw sienna. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll keep going on this row since I'll probably erase this row. So if I don't like what I'm doing here, because I'm going a little bit faster for the video, then uh, tomorrow I, or later tonight even, just take it all off. Now you don't want to put too much on. That's why I'm putting it on with uh, a toothpick up here. And you can, you can get down to just a dab. I just want to put a dab there. Then I'm going to come back and add just a little bit of the darker to it. Just put it right in that same mix. Of course, if you want a dark rust, you do more of the dark. And if you want a light rust, you do more of the light. It's kind of common sense. And then, taking a flat brush and this is a pretty wide one. I think uh, when I come back, I'm getting a good amount of that mineral spirit off. I don't want it too watery. Is just start and draw it down the way water would flow. Just kind of edging it up to that, uh, that line of demarcation. Turning it on its edge to make finer, or you could get a, have two brushes going, a wider one and a finer one. And uh, just draw it down a little bit here and there. You just making it look the way you want it to look. And I think the finer lines look better in the long run. But I think you, you get the idea of uh, this approach. And, you know, within an hour or two, you could pick it up and handle it. But uh, these are oils, so it takes a while for them to dry completely. But uh, again, if there's anything you don't like on it, just come back, um, and clean your brush off of any paint. Uh, by the way, I have my... Uh, my mineral spirits in a crockery, I think these are custard cups, you can get them in a oh, Bed Bath & Beyond has them or some kitchen supply store. They're good because they have some weight to them and they're not going to tip over. And The last thing you want is tipping your solvents all over the place. So uh, again, what you can do is just come back and uh, apply this over this area, let's say. Now what this is doing is taking the gray off too, it looks like, because they probably didn't let it cure long enough. But anyway, you can see it comes all the way off. And if I had let that cure longer, um, 
it would not come down to the white. But uh, I think what I'll probably do now is uh, get all of the orange off and uh, give it a light coat of gray and start all over. But uh, I'll give you the idea of what we're what we're talking about, and uh, to give you an idea of the way this would look on the structure. Had to disappear into another universe a minute to grab this, but this will be the lower roof. And uh, these pieces that I'm working on now will be part of this uh, upper roof up here. Okay, so there you go. That's, uh, oops, couldn't see that, could you? There you go lower roof and uh, these pieces the one I just glued together plus this one that I, we scribed the line on that'll be part of the upper roof alrighty uh, that takes care of working with uh, corrugated uh, sheet styrene to represent metal roofing